A lot of people, especially players who are newer to the game, tell me that they find Hexia to be the most difficult of the three bosses you can find at the end of a run of Slice and Dice. I believe that Hexia is actually the easiest of the three bosses you can face, however I did not always feel this way. So I asked myself where this disconnect comes in and I realized it's because Hexia has a lot of tricks that you have to understand and she fundamentally shifts the game's flow in a way that no other boss does. So I figured we'd take some time today and talk about what Hexia does differently than every other fight in the game, and how you can be better at navigating it. Before we begin, let's talk about what Hexia actually does. Hexia has 30 HP, notably this is 10 less HP than the other two bosses you could fight at this point, and she has two passives. Pain Mirror, which is whenever you hit Hexia the attacker will take equal damage in return, and Mana Burn, whenever you spend mana the bottom hero will take a damage equal to the mana spent. There's some nuance in how these actually operate. To begin with, we can talk about the Pain Mirror. Pain Mirror works similar to any other spikes effect in the game, in that you can get around it with range, and it will hit you based off of item effects doing damage as well. For example, Burning Halo and Deadly Bolt, if these do damage to Hexia, will also do damage to the character holding those items. Pain Sides will take double damage, so if you have a Barbarian swing with his 8 Pain Side into Hexia, he will take 16, 8 from the Pain, and 8 from the Pain Mirror. The Mana Burn is straightforward, there's nothing really to know about it. If you spend mana, your bottom hero takes damage. This can be dodged with a dodge effect. It can also be redirected with one of the redirect effects on your grave. Hexia's dice in itself has three attacks, each of them representing two faces on the die. A four damage petrify, an eight damage descend that applies pain, and summon a demon. When you compare these dice to the other two bosses you can fight here, you will notice that Hexia's upfront damage output is significantly lower than the other two bosses, the hand having attacks that can do upwards of 35, dragon hitting, 20s to cross the team, and 15 single target. Hexia's highest possible damage output is 16 with the pain. Hexia will also spawn in with either 3 or 4 imps, though I think one time I saw her spawn in with a demon. A big portion of Hexia's damage output, as a result, comes from Pain Mirror and Mana Burn, which is interesting because it does something that no other boss in this game does to the same degree as her, only two other bosses do even slightly at all. To understand why Hexia will feel so punishing to you as a newer player or someone who doesn't know, we have to talk about the concept of tempo. Tempo is a word that you'll hear thrown around a ton in all kinds of different games. Chess, Hearthstone, League of Legends, to name a few. If you're unfamiliar, tempo is the rate at which a game is going. Whoever controls the tempo in a competitive game is controlling the pace and would be considered to be at an advantage. Slice and Dice, however, is a single player game. So how does tempo relate here? To understand this, let's break Slice and Dice down into its most basic of concepts. The goal of every interaction of Slice and Dice is ultimately to press end turn with all of the enemies dead. A bonus objective here is to have as many characters of yours alive as possible as it'll contribute to the stability of your next combat, making the base goal easier on and on until you reach the end of the run. The lose condition of course then is to have no characters alive. The enemies as a result of this control the tempo of each combat, they will throw damage at you, you will answer it. The tempo is always in their favor, they roll, they have the initiative, they set the pace. All you can do is respond to it either by blocking the damage or killing them. Every fight is a pace being set by the enemies, you answer it until the fight is over and they are dead or you are dead. As you've probably sussed out by now, Hexia breaks this foundational system. As we've already established, Hexia's damage output is a lot lower than both the dragon and the hands. Or is it? The answer to that question actually depends entirely on you and how you play the fight. And this brings us to the crux of the point. Hexia shifts the tempo of the fight out of her hands and into your hands. If we think about it in the basic terms of winning is killing the enemies and losing is running out of health, the tempo is set by the amount of damage the enemies are doing, the enemies tend to, in every other fight, determine that. However, 
In the Hexia fight, not all, but a large majority of the damage done by Hexia is decided by you. Decided by when you hit into her, when you cast your spells, and if you swing with pain. That is the point. This is what I wanted to get across to you. The damage that you take in this fight is mostly controlled by you, not by Hexia. It's unintuitive because the rest of the game plays in a different way. Okay, so now you understand this concept of tempo and how it applies to Slice and Dice and why Hexia breaks the rules. So now let's talk about what you can do with this information. There are only a few general tips for Hexia, and the very simplest thing to understand here is that you should kill the imps. If you're ever not killing the imps, the only reason you're not killing the imps is because you have enough damage to kill Hexia within the first two turns for sure. That's a gamble that you have to be willing to take. Typically speaking, Hexia is a fight that you want to play extremely slowly, and to do that you want to reduce the damage, and to reduce the damage you want to kill those imps off. Other than that, there are three mechanics that you want to go into the fight thinking about weakening, cleansing, and dodging. A well-timed dodge will dodge a big hit from Hexia. That's strong. A weaken stops a demon from spawning. That's strong. And cleanse lets you break out of Petrify if you were unable to dodge it. Anything that lets you effectively negate one of Hexia's turns will put you very far ahead. Worth noting on the cleanse front that Shaman and Doctor's spells will often do more harm than good because of mana burn, but there are ways around that as well. So let's start by talking about the characters. I'll go through color by color here. I'm only really going to talk about the tier 3s, just mostly going to talk about the ones that fare really well. For Hexia, for oranges, I think there are three characters that are worth mentioning as winners here. Venom, Assassin, and Sharpshot. A fight that wants to be played slow favors Venom because poison does its damage over time. That is very good. Venom also has access to a defensive option, so on a turn where you just want to sit and not attack, you can throw out a cleanse if you roll it. Also very nice. Assassin is a nice all-arounder. You have ranged damage with Engage to help clean up the imps. You have poison to do damage to Hexia, and you have a dodge. Also solid. You also have the cruel side which you can use to burst Hexia down towards the end of the fight. Solid as well. Sharpshot is like, fine. Sharpshot's all ranged attacks, and if you have anything that pairs with the copycat side well, because the fight is so long, you will eventually hit the copycat combo, which is worth thinking about at least. Honorable mention here for Dabalist. I don't think Dabalist is particularly strong here, but it's nice to have a character with some defensive options in the Hexia. On the yellows, I think that the only character worth mentioning that performs a little higher than his average weight class here is Wanderer, because the fight will go long, the arrow will go long. The rest of the characters are basically the same. Barbarian. But Barbarian's always good. It feels silly to even take time to say, yeah, Barbarian's good here. Barbarian's always good. For the greys, Valkyrie Stalwart. Again, they're always good, but they're particularly good here. Paladin gets an honorable mention. Stalwart's a little better because Stalwart has two cleanse sides versus Paladin's one. Anything that brings cleanse is decent. Also, Valkyrie lets you do some pretty proactive stuff, like kill a character on Pain Mirror, kill a character on Mana Burn, and then play Valkyrie's Resurrection. You get to do Resurrects without losing a turn, which is really good. The reds and the blues are where we start to really care, because they're more heavily affected by Mana Burn. The all-around goat for Hexia for reds is Witch. Which brings two main things to the table, the Weaken and the Cleanse. One damage Weaken cancels Hexia's Demon Spawns, and the five heal Cleanse cancels the Petrify. So in which you have the potential to beat four out of six rolls for Hexia just naturally. Which also has the only consistently usable health positive spell with Salve because it costs one to heal two. There are reasons not to pick Witch we can talk about in a different video because Witch doesn't pair well with some blues, but Nonetheless, Witch really does well in this fight. The rest of the reds are about the same as a normal run. Honorable mention to Forsaken because of the same thing that we said with Valkyrie, you have the proactive ability to res. Blues will have a big problem of dying. Mana burn really can punish them quite a bit. I think that Hexia particularly hurts Warlock because Warlock does take a lot of damage. If you don't have a solid game plan in place for Warlock when you're going into Hexia, he will struggle. 
The upside of Warlock is that for 12 mana he kills the boss. He does 26 for 12 mana if you can keep him alive. Weaver I think is probably one of the better ones for this fight because you have dodge on him and you can bank mana pretty well. Really the rest of the blues are about the same. Dodge blues are a little better because you can dodge the mana burn. The only other blue that I would say deserves an honorable mention here is gas. I know everyone hates gas with good reason, but as weaken is strong, Ghast can walk into this fight with two options of weakening, which can lower the Petrify down a critical amount, or it can just stop the demon spawns, and then Ghast just blows himself up for 5 mana and pieces out. It's a solid combo, really. I'm gonna run through the items pretty quickly here. There are two main items that I think you want to keep an eye out for, that if you're having consistent trouble with Hexia, the good thing is that these items are just generally good, so you're not really risking much but you want to keep an eye out for Determination and Thimble. Thimble removes damage taken on your turn, so you get to completely ignore Hexia's Pain Mirror and Mana Burn for one character, and Determination makes you unable to die for the first two turns, so for the first two turns you get to ignore those two mechanics. Both very solid answers to the Hexia problem, and they're good items generally across the characters. Other than that, Shuriken and Triple Shuriken are good. The ability to give ranged to your sides means that you get to cheat around Pain Mirror, which is solid. Cocoon can be okay. Anything that gives Era, Tourmaline, Pariba, and Cocoon. Tourmaline, Pariba is just good, but Cocoon can just be okay. The minus one, if it's giving you zeros on turn one, can set you pretty far behind. Situationally, things that just generate long-term value, like Overflowing Chalice and Investment can do well, but you have to be sure that you're not going to kill yourself off of the mana you generate. Lastly here, four items. If you're feeling lucky, you can pick up Titan Bane Potion in the second tier item slot. Titan Bane Potion, if you connect it with Hexia, removes Pain Mirror and Mana Burn completely. It turns the fight into a complete joke. So the downside, of course, is that you don't get an actual tier 2 and it's a single-use item. But if your other tier 2 is bad, you can take this and worst case into Dragon or the Hand, it's a plus 1. Actually, uh, don't play this into the Hand because then you take away your plus 1, but you can play it into Dragon. And that's pretty much it. This is not an exhaustive list. There are plenty of other item combos you can come up with that would make Hexia easier. You can play with a bunch of different hero combos to do things. There are many things I didn't mention because really it's just too much. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have other cool tips and tricks for beating Hexia, I'll be sure to respond. I think that overall it's important at some point in your run to think about the question, how am I going to live through Hexia, but don't think about it too much because I don't feel like it's that hard of a question to answer unless you have a really bad curse. I hope this helped in your journey to becoming a better Slice and Dice player, and feel free to let me know if I missed anything. Thanks for watching.